Hello everyone, you're watching Campus Channel and we're here today with ESCP to talk about the Bachelor of Science in Management. We have Benjamin Voyer, the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies, and Leon Ernst, a second year student, who are here to take your questions. But first, we're going to start with the pitch. All right, guys, you have 60 seconds. Are you ready? Yes, we are. All right, go. Um, so our Bachelor of Science in Management is a unique program that offers over three years our students who study management, liberal arts and languages every year changing and studying in a different campus which is one of our uh, ESC Europe 6 uh, campuses. Um, it's a program that targets bright students that want to study among other international students and don't want to close door and want to balance management liberal arts uh, and humanities. All right, so 30 seconds left. Leon, do you want to add anything? No, I think Ben mentioned them, uh, the points that are most important. So I think it's the most important thing is that we are changing every uh, year the country, uh, the country and the campus and uh, that we got humanities uh, in our management program as well. I think that's the most important point. 15 seconds. Shall we move on to the face to face? Uh, we or? can, yeah. All right, let's just wrap up the timer. We'll move on to the face to face. Please remember to keep sending us your questions because they're going to show up right there. So let's take the first one. Ben? Sure. Um, can you explain the difference between this BSc and a BBA, please? Is one better than the other? Um, I think that's a very good question. Typically, Bachelor of Business in Administration and Bachelor of Science in Management have a different focus. Obviously, when you study in a Bachelor of Science in Management, there is the science bit, and the science bit comes in the form of more maths courses, more statistics, statistics courses. And generally speaking, it's a program that really gears you to prepare you to all the kind of like various careers that you can do in business, not just marketing or, or maybe the less quantitative subject, but also finance. So for us really, there is a deep focus that is on quantitative topics. Uh, and that's why it's called a Bachelor of Science uh, in Management. Um, but you still give classes in qualitative subjects as well, in humanities yes. and arts. Absolutely, and that's the specificity of this program is that we balance the kind of science side of things, even with um, a coding course, for instance, with something that are um, designed to provide our students with a different way of thinking and a different types of knowledge, and that's international relation, uh, that's psychology, sociology, uh, and so on. So it's a bit like you're doing a bachelor in management, but with a minor in liberal arts and a minor uh, in, in maybe some more maths and stat uh, topics applied to finance uh, or other quantitative top okay. topics. And Leon, you were telling me that you had actually done a year of studies before you switched to yep. this program. What were you doing before ESCP? Uh, I studied at a German business school, uh, business administration. But uh, for me, the main point was that I wanted to have the humanities, as Ben mentioned, in my program as well. And uh, my program was also called International Business Administration. But it was not really international and uh, that's the, the thing that I think is unique. It's really international because we are changing campus and country every year. I think that's unique. Mm. And the other thing is that, you know, I know many schools said that they have international students, but the type of international students we have are different. A lot of universities that say we've got international students have like typical German, typical <laughs> French, typical Spanish and so on. Our students, our German students are not typical German students. They've grew up all around the world. Our French students maybe never set foot in France. So we seem to attract some of the most diverse international uh, nationals in a way uh, in the world. And that's what's really exciting. All right, maybe we'll get to a little bit more of that later. Sure. Let's take the next question. Leon, yep. will you read this please? Yep. Why would this program be better than a similar bachelor at somewhere like LSE or HALT? I think uh, we can refer to the question before. It's like. Uh, a similar one, but uh, yeah, I think the bachelor at the uh, ECP is different because, as we mentioned, three countries uh, in three years, um, we got uh, cultural people from everywhere, like so many different backgrounds. Um, as Ben mentioned, we got people who are originally French speaking, who lived their entire life in Japan. Um, so for me, it was the, the thing that made ECP's bachelor different is the thing that there's humanities in there. We got people from so many different backgrounds and we got quantitative subjects as well as mentioned before, the humanities. Did you consider other schools or other programs before yep. you chose this one? Yeah, uh, I considered other schools, definitely. Uh, some in Germany, some in the UK, um, some here in France as well. But uh, for me, the main point was there's no, uh, no bachelor that combines management and humanities. So for me, it was the main point, politics and economics, and that's all in our program. Mm -hmm. Then what would your answer be to this student? 
Well, I think it depends where your interests lie, but if you're truly interested in the, the ultimate international experience, I don't think there is anything else in the market that combines academic excellence, that combines studying in different countries within the same institution, and that combines the wide range of topics from more qualitative topics that guarantee that you can work in finance if you want afterwards, but at the same time introducing you to the joys of doing uh, liberal arts and humanities to be a well-rounded person and well-rounded student. All right, let's move on to the next question. Ben, will you read this, please? Sure. Is it possible to work professionally after this bachelor, uh, or is one more likely to continue to a master's program? Uh, again, a very good question. Typically, it really depends on where you want to work. In some countries, it's often the case that people will go and work right after the bachelor's. That's the case uh, in the UK, for instance, when you can get into a graduate program. Um, in other countries, for instance, in France, perhaps it's more difficult to work right after your bachelor because most companies will expect you to have um, achieved a master's level. Uh, but that is said, we do offer many internships during the program, which means that people that do want to work after the program, and sometimes it's not just, I would say, regular corporate work. It can be about starting your own company, for instance. And that's something our program prepare uh, our students well to do. You have entrepreneurship initiatives within the program. Absolutely, yeah. They come in the form of some of the modules, like collective projects where people, uh, our students are yeah. entrepreneurs of their own projects. Uh, and uh, they come in the form of some entrepreneurship electives uh, during the program uh, and also seeing live on our campuses what we call the Blue Factory, which is ESCP Europe's very own incubator for startups. And so Leon, we were talking a little bit earlier yep. about working after this program. Yep. Will you want to get a job after this program or yeah. will you want to go on to get a master's? Yeah, as explained, I would, like to, I would love to work for two years uh, and then do my master's degree, uh, mainly because I'm interested in macroeconomics, possibly in public finance but uh, I have many other students who want to directly do their masters. So it's very diverse in this area as well. And uh, to add what Ben said, yeah, it's really like, we got an entrepreneurial thinking in our uh, degree and it's, we, we're currently doing a collective project where we are working together with startups and we are helping them by developing their business. So we definitely get this uh, thinking by ECP. And Ben mentioned employability and feasibility of finding a job a little bit by region. Yep. Um, France maybe might be a little bit harder. What kinds of jobs do you expect to have access to whenever you finish this program? So what I realized is that it's for us as bachelor students uh, easier to find a job in the UK, uh, also with the internships because they're used to hiring bachelor students after uh, you finish your degree. Uh, also in Germany they more and more get uh, used to it, um, so it's it was or it is more easy to find an internship there than as in France. Uh, so I think it's definitely possible for us at ECP with the reputation. All right, let's take the next question. Will you read it, Leon? Yep. The program is focused on management but includes other social sciences subjects. What's the proportion of business-oriented classes to other material? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can answer yeah. that one. Um, I would say it's about 60% management, 50-60% management, depending on how you classify the topics. And then you've got a good 40% that is mixing liberal arts, humanities, other courses that are not necessarily liberal arts like coding, but are, uh, we feel are important as part of well-rounded education. And then you've got languages. Students study the language of their second and third year uh, campuses. So the proportion, I would say, is a, to sum up around 40% of non-management topic, which is big compared to other institutions. And I feel which is why a lot of students choose us, because they get not just management. It's not easy when you're 17 or 18 to know that you want to do management for the rest of your life. And so these give people the time to kind of get familiar with management is about, to learn what topics they like into management, whether it's marketing or finance, uh, while getting this kind of well-rounded education uh, and get to know about the world and learn about international relations, um, get to know about you know, apps and programming and, and do coding, uh, or discover psychology and sociology, which are important topics when it comes to understanding why and how consumers behave in a marketing class, for instance. And how much of those humanities classes are Flexible. How much flexibility is there in terms of the electives and the, the choice that the student gets? Excellent question. In the first two years, it's a set menu. So we've identified liberal arts and humanities courses that we feel are foundation disciplines of management. So for instance, if you want to understand international, international economics, it's important you understand and know about international relations. Um, if you want to be good at marketing, uh, and sales and so on, psychology, sociology will be useful. In your third year, every semester, you've got an elective to choose uh, in liberal arts uh, and the topic vary uh, quite widely. So you have one elective in the third year. Um, 
one elective in liberal arts per semester uh, and then management elective as I well. See. So the third year is much more of a make your own year and try to give a flavor to your degree uh, and a concentration to your degree that suits what you've identified in the first two years. So that's where these students can actually set themselves apart from their cohort and from their other exactly. students in this program. Yeah, and start preparing you know, either their master's application uh, or maybe their job market application by getting the right electives for their profile. Leon, are there any classes that you have your eye on that look interesting? I'm interested in economics, so I think I will uh, try to get more into this, uh, but yeah. All right, let's take the next question. Leon, will you read it, please? Yep. Since the program is in three different countries, what languages do I absolutely have to speak fluently? So uh, when I applied, uh, it's definitely required that you speak English. Um, you, it's preferably, it's good if you speak another language uh, in a level with uh, A2 or B1. Um, so for example, uh, French, uh, Spanish or Italian. Um, but it's not, uh, I think it's not a definite uh, requirement, but maybe Ben can answer. So yeah, English is the obvious one. Um, you can follow the entire program in English, and, but we, we require everyone to be fully fluent with uh, corresponding ILTS or TOEFL scores. If you want to study on certain tracks, you will have to master the local language. For instance, if you want to do your second year in Paris, you will need to show that you've got B1 proficiency in French. If you want to do your second year in Madrid, you also need to show proficiency in Spanish. Um, if you don't speak French or Spanish, you can do your second year in Turin, where all the classes are in English, but you will learn Italian. If you want to do your third year uh, in Paris, you also have to show proficiency in French. So to summarize, English and depending on the track, French, Spanish. So it's a little bit less flexible than what we think. You, if you're going to do it all in English, there is an absolute set specific track that you have to follow. Yeah, exactly. So you can follow two tracks if you're absolutely set uh, in Engl to learning only in English, which is London uh, first year and then Turin second year and Berlin third year. That can be followed entirely in English. Uh, and you can also do Paris, Turin uh, and Berlin and that can also be uh, followed absolutely entirely in English. Very good. Let's take the next question. Ben, sure. shall you read please? Absolutely. Why is this program only three years when most other programs are four years? Um, the answer to this is that a three-year bachelor is the norm in Europe. Um, so there is a system called a Bologna process and Bologna system which states that bachelor takes three years, uh, masters another two years and then doctorate, PhDs, an additional three years. Um, so that's three, five, eight. Uh, so the standard for bachelors in Europe is three years. Most programs that offer bachelor in four years have more modeled it, I guess, after the American system. Uh, and there are some differences in terms of high schools, uh, which means that often if you graduate from a European high school, you get college credits when you go to the US. So in a sense, um, students that come from uh, a European uh, school are well prepared to uh, do their bachelor's in uh, three years. All right, I think that answers it very well. Mm -hmm. Let's take the next question, Leon. Yep. How, does the, uh, how do the humanities courses factor into the curriculum and what's the value? Uh, so I think it's a pretty good question, uh, actually, because you asked me before uh, if I studied before uh, and I did in Germany. And for me, it was important that I got you know, the humanities in there. And uh, I think they fit pretty well, because if you uh, go and do an internship, you will realize in every work environment, if it's in economics or finance, there's always humanity somewhere behind it. And uh, I think that that helps you in your daily business life uh, that you have these uh, subjects within the bachelor program. So you're saying the humanities classes account for about 40% yeah. of the curriculum. Yeah, that's correct. And so in terms of value as well, um, most, of, most of them will have the same uh, credit value as management courses. So it's really to show that we give as much importance to the humanities, uh, liberal arts, uh, and, and also languages uh, as we do to uh, management co courses and classes. And so there are some students who say, why am I taking accounting? I'm going to be an English teacher. I don't need to take accounting. There might be some students who say, I'm an accountant. Why am I taking English classes? Mm -hmm. So what is the value for students in taking these humanities classes? I think the value is in getting a well-rounded education. Often you don't realize the importance of topics until way later after your, gra your graduation. When we build this course, um, we organize multiple benchmarks with other institutions. We also surveyed students that told us about their under undergraduate experience. And one thing always came back is that those that did management always said, I wish I had kind of eye-opening topics. You know, things about that tell me about how the world works. Not in a business way, because I know and I, I've nailed it, but something that is more perhaps also on the soft skills. Uh, and it's something that we do very well with the course, having courses in rhetoric, 
presentation skills that help you to better um, discuss and debate uh, and they go nicely you know hand to hand with our classes in international relations in psychology in sociology uh, and and trade history and so on all right we're going to take our first break it is time mm -hmm. for three words max Our guests have three words to describe their program and they get one phrase for each word to explain why they chose that word. So who's going to give me the first word? Do you want to start? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to say unique. And I know many schools are going to say unique, but I don't think there are any programs in the market that combine management, liberal arts, languages, humanities, and studying every year in a different campus. All right. Word number two. I would say international, uh, because there's not any program uh, on the market, I think, that's as international as ECP's bachelor program, where you can go to several different countries within three years of your bachelor studies. Okay, and third and final word? I would say concrete. What's unique about our program is that you learn about theory and practice. So with us, it's not just about what happens in the book, but we put it in perspective with real-world applications. Very good. All right, let's get back to the face-to-face. -face. Next question, Leon, will you read this, please? Yeah, yep. Other courses different between city tracks, other specializations specific to tracks. Uh, so actually the courses are not different between the city tracks. We all got the same uh, courses at the moment. So my friends in Madrid got the same courses as I uh, have in Paris. So there's not a big difference between this. And uh, speci uh, specializations, I think in the third year are not different as well. They will be the same as well. So yeah. all first years, no matter what city, take the same classes. Yeah, so the first two years, it's a set menu. You get the same classes. In your third year, you've got electives. Um, if you do your third year in Paris, the electives might be different because they might reflect local expertise, but the core courses will always be the same. You're not going to be missing out uh, by doing your second year in Madrid compared to doing it in Turin or Paris uh, or else. So really the choice is just what language do you speak or want to learn yeah, to speak and exactly. what city do you want to spend time in? <laughs> exactly, not a bad choice. All right, <laughs> let's take the next question, Ben. Could you give us a percentage of the students who have to repeat their year because of their insufficient academic results? That's well. a good question. That's a tricky <laughs> one. Look, um, we select students at the entrance. We are selective. And when we get people on board, we are confident that students will succeed. However, for various reasons, it can happen that students fail. When they fail with us, they have a first receipt opportunity the same year. Uh, and if they fail the receipt, they have a last resort, which is a second receipt, uh, which happens the, um, the following year, the subsequent year. Um, typically, at the end of a year, um, it's low. Uh, I would say, uh, low, not the subject. Uh, I would say 5%, uh, 5% uh, maximum of the students. Uh, but you know, it, it, it very varies. Our goal is to take every entrant to the degree, providing they work hard. The conclusion to the students, in case they're worried, is if you work hard, there's, you know, and if you've been selected, you should be able to follow the classes. Certainly. Well, and that 5%, do they just end up redoing the courses? Do they repeat yeah. the year? Yeah. So they can, they can repeat the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've never had a case of a student after, uh, you know, second receipt not being able to uh, pass the module. All right. No failing your second year, Leon. Hmm. All right. Hopefully <laughs> not. <laughs> All right. Read this next question, please. I'm about to apply to the BSc. Am I sure to be able to study in London next year if I ask for this campus? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. It's a good yeah. question. Um, every campus has got, you know, is, is quite highly in demand. Um, and when we do track location, we do it on a series of criteria. So we want to maintain a highly diverse student body. Um, so if we had, let's say, all our German applicants applying on the first day of application and, and you know, let's say we, we would get like 30 very bright German students, uh, and they all want to go to London, we would not necessarily allocate all of them to London because this would kind of break, you know, the, uh, what we're trying to reach, which is a quite a diverse uh, student body. Um, so it's a mix of the tracks you want to go to, uh, availability, because we know, for instance, that actually, um, unlike what I've just said, where Germans would apply uh, at the beginning, it's often done at a later stage yeah. because you apply in Germany once you uh, get your abitur. Yeah. Um, so we make sure that for and Germans are never late. And Germans <laughs> are never late, definitely not. 
So we make sure that we save, you know, so to say, some spots in London for the later sessions that are very popular among the German applicants. So in short, um, it depends on the student profile, it depends on the other applications. Uh, and what we do is we always rank after every admission session, every student, uh, and we try to give them by order of uh, merit and, and ranking in the list, the uh, first choice uh, on their list. If that's not the case, they have the second, at least they know before they start where they're going to study. Can they make a case for why they want to study in a particular place? Absolutely. And this is often something that is discussed during the interview with the students. So that's taken into, it, into account after the fact, whenever you're getting ready to select. And, and Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's take the next question, Leon. Yep. How many students do you take in each year? How many applications do you get? Maybe I'll, I'll yeah. take that one because I have the numbers in mind. <laughs> um, this year, uh, we've got close to 300 students that are split almost equally a few more in London than in Paris, but between our two first year campuses. Um, and typically the ratio varies one to four, one to five uh, applicants. So five applicants per uh, intake for per uh, students uh, in the classroom. I have to say we've got very good applications because this is such a unique program that we've got some top-notch students that really have all the criteria that we want, which is academic excellence, but a personality and, and bringing diversity to the program. And is 300 students, is that about the average that you've had for the past couple of years? Um, we had fewer because the program is still um, in its infancy, so to say. So it's a program that is growing. Um, and we are lucky to have uh, facilities that can accommodate growth. But for us, the most important stays and will remain to get diverse and excellent students. Are you seeing a higher demand for this program, more applications each Every year? Every year we've seen a multiplication, I know it's gonna sound high, but that's true, by two to three. Um, so we've got this year compared to last year, uh, I think it's 2.7 times the number of applicants to the program. The program is now generating a lot of word of mouth as well, so students talk to yeah. you know, peers and so on, and social media really help uh, the program to be better known uh, on the market. And as this program grows, will you take more students, or if the applications continue to increase, will you increase your capacity for well, admissions? No, I mean, you know, we, there's only so many students we can take and, and for us, you know, quality is important. Uh, and what it means uh, is that, you know, we've got some room for adjustment uh, if we get, uh, you know, like uh, excellent students. Uh, but, you know, what will happen is it's the same for all programs. You know, we will um, have to be tougher on, on admissions uh, and, you know, that's already tough sometimes because we get many, many good applicants and we sometimes have to reject applicants that have been a good credential subgrade. Um, but for us, the interview process is very important. And that's really when we see um, whether there is a fit with the kind of ESCP mindset, ESCP Europe mindset, which is to be open, uh, interested in meeting international students and bringing an element of diversity uh, to the classroom. Very good. Let's take the next question. Ben, will you read this, please? Sure. It's kind of scary, but exciting to do a program, to do an international program at 18 year old. Are there counseling services available to help with personal support? Um, I think it's a very good question. Uh, and it can be daunting uh, to say that, you know, you're 18, 17, you know, we've got students as young as 16 in the program uh, that are going to spend the next three years of their life uh, across three different cities uh, in Europe. Um, so we have support services, for instance, uh, uh, it depends on the campus. So on the Paris campus in your first year, uh, we actually have some uh, counselors uh, on site. Uh, in London, um, we have a helpline, a 24-7 helpline if, if you've got issues. But also, every single student on the bachelor has got an academic advisor. And your personal academic advisor, you meet with them at least one semester, more if necessary, is there in the kind of like Anglo-Saxon way to advise not just on academic matters, but also on what we call pastoral care. So making sure you're well integrated within the cohort, uh, making sure that anything that can affect your studies, be it you know outside of uni time, uh, we are aware of and we can direct you to the right person. So Leon, how have these conversations gone with your academic advisor? Yeah, um, so it was pretty good to have an academic advisor on his uh, on your side because it it really helps you if you get. When I went to London, for example. Uh, Everyone felt a bit unsure uh, at the first, and then you knew there is someone you can speak to in case you, you need him. And uh, this helped quite a lot. Or if you need help with a subject, or there is an issue uh, with your housing, or everything, whatever it is, they were always there for you, and this was quite good. Yeah. 
So no question that can't be answered by the academic advisor. They're there um, to help. Oh, well, they, you know, there might be some. There, well, know, even though they are faculty it's members of ours, uh, they, you know, they, they might not be able to answer everything. But generally speaking, they're your first point of contact. And you know that if you're in a case where you know, there's an urgent question or something else, you've got a personal point of contact you can yeah. get in touch to. Right. That's also one of the benefits, just to finish on this, of having smaller campuses rather than being like one big city campus as you can find in the UK or in the US or, or other parts of the world is that all of our campuses have a human feel to it. You know, it feels a bit more, so to say, like a high school, but with university students in terms of its size, rather than walking into a city where even after two years, you're going to discover that these people were actually in your class, but you know, you never saw them, uh, but they're the same as you. And Very good. Everyone it's, yes. knows everyone, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's like it's, it's, a like, it's like a family. Yeah, yeah it's a family. It's, <laughs> it's nice in that respect. Let's move on to the next question. Yeah. Leon, will you read this, please? Yeah. Are there any set entry requirements for the program, specifically in terms of grades? Maybe this one's for Ben. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, you know, mm. we've made it clear that we're looking for high profile students, you know, uh, typically depending on the, on the kind of, you know, universe system you're looking for, we're really looking at students that are in the top 10, top 15%. Academic excellence is one of the main criteria, but it's not just about academic excellence. That is, if we've got two equally bright students, academically speaking, we are going to make the difference uh, between the two and select on the basis of personality, um, other activities being involved in, in community work, charity, and so on. We're really concerned in bringing the best of internationally minded students together. What we want is emulation in the classroom, dynamic conversation, dialogue, debates. Um, it's not always what you get by getting just the purely best by the book, so to say, uh, top graders, top performers. So we make sure that all the students are among the best, but they have that kind of edge, that difference. That means that they're going to make the classroom an exciting classroom to be in. And I imagine a lot of that comes out in the interview as well. Absolutely, yeah. When you're preparing the interview, make sure that you insist on what makes you different from other candidates. We know the grades. By the time you're at interview stage, we feel that you've got the capacity to fit into the program, at least on the basis of academic credential. Now is your chance to really convince us that you've got that little spark that are going to make you interesting uh, and that we will want to have you in the classroom. Leon, how was your interview? Was it scary? Was it easy? Were you nervous? Yeah, I was a bit nervous actually, but when I went in and uh, people were, were relaxed and they were just asking you questions like you could directly answer. So it was more based on your personality and they really wanted to get to know you. They, they don't want to be harsh to you or anything like this. They just really, they focus on your personality and that's the important thing for them. Was there any question that you got stumped on that was uh, difficult I was asked, to answer? I, I was asked a finance question because my interviewee was a banking professor and he saw that I did an internship before in the bank. So uh, this was the only question, but it was like more a question to yeah, get, out, get to know what I did at the bank. I see. All right, let's take the next question, Leon. Yeah, and will my degree be valid outside the countries I did my studies? Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll take that one. Yeah. So we have, uh, we're quite lucky because actually we can grow on two degrees. We have a German Bachelor of Science, um, which is granted and accredited by the Berlin Senate uh, and also by Aquin, which is an independent German accreditation agency. And our degree is now got the uh, visa of the French government and the French Ministry for Higher Education. So students, depending on the track, uh, and depending on some uh, prerequisite on the degree, but admission is here to help, uh, will receive one or two degrees uh, depending on these. Okay, and then outside of the continental... So typically in the European Union, yes, because degrees are uh, widely recognized uh, if you go to a member state. Um, and then we are also accredited, for instance, by ACSB, which is the American Agency for uh, Business School, accrediting business school. Uh, so they recognize all of our degrees. Um, so that should help people that want, for instance, to look for a job in the US because our school is recognized by uh, ACSB. All right, very good. Let's take the next question. Ben, will you read sure. this, please? Uh, good question. What is the ambition of ESCP Europe for uh, future development? ESCP Europe, um, and I would say as a school, aims to be the premier European business school in the sense that when we think about business schools in Europe, one of the first names that comes into mind is ESCP Europe. And how we want to achieve this is by making sure that we get the same recognition on every campus in which, uh, in every country in on which we have a campus. Um, and for instance, at the moment we have university status in Germany 
Um, we are recognized as the oldest and one of the leading grand schools in business in France. Um, we're in the process of becoming a university in the UK, in Italy. So the future is really to make ESCP Europe a European university and European business school. Um, it's also to uh, bring cultures and show people the importance of cultures in doing business. Uh, and that's the root of our multi-campus structure. And that's what uh, we really want to push forward uh, in the coming years. We're about to launch um, some uh, exciting executive degrees with uh, partners in China and the US around culture, diplomacy uh, and business. So that's really where uh, the future of uh, ESCP Europe is about. Leon, beyond the multi-city campus, do you see these European ambitions play out day to day in the classes that you take, in the conversations, in the courses that you take? Yeah, definitely, because uh, as we mentioned, uh, we are so many different students from so many different countries and uh, we see ECP space in Europe um, and we are always talking about the situation in Europe. Even if we have lunch or something like this, we are always talking about politics in Europe, what's going on in Europe. So you feel that ECP is really uh, based in Europe and we, we see us based in Europe, but I, I think with a global perspective. All right, we are halfway through the interview and that can mean only one thing. Yes, that's right, it is time for Russian Roulette. <laughs> will they get the best or will they get the worst? There's only one way to find out. And I don't know if you guys talked about it before, but who's gonna, you, who's gonna be the victim? Do you wanna do it or do yeah, you wanna do it? I don't know, do you wanna do it? I, I didn't do it last year. Can I do it this year? Sure. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm going to toss it. Okay. What do I get? The worst meeting. Oh. Gosh, my boss is not going to be happy about that. <laughs> uh, worst meeting. Um, I think the worst meeting, to be honest, is always admissions because you, this is when you have to say no to good students. Uh, and it's really tough because you know you've got all the kind of you know lives of this 17, 18 year old that have applied that really want to join the school that have done great in the interview, and suddenly you're having a meeting about admissions and you have to decide and say yes to them, no to them, or maybe this one wants to go to London, but you know London is is already fully booked for that session and so on. So for me that's always the toughest, toughest because you know you you do really project with building your ideal classroom and you have to make tough calls on these. You're a very powerful person. These are just <laughs> children and you are deciding their fates. Exactly, yes it's or unfair. No. It's unfair. All right, what about for you, Leon? The worst meeting. The worst meeting, it's a good question, actually. Uh, I think there wasn't the worst meeting at ECP. I, I, I had many good ones, to be honest. Uh, sometimes you also have critical ones. So for example, if you've got a, a problem with someone or there's something not as good as you wish it to be, or then you, you'd really try to communicate with people. And then sometimes it not gets worse. It's just like that you need to discuss things. But I think only if we communicate, we can make ECP the best. Uh, and that's what we all want, yeah. I think. You didn't yeah. actually answer the question, though. Have you had a worse meeting at ESCP? Maybe a group uh, project? Maybe, or yeah, or? yeah, yeah, I had a group meeting yeah, at, uh, during the collective project when we, were, uh, we had discussions and problems with cultural things. Uh, this was in London, actually. Mm -hmm. um, this was pretty worse because we had different, uh, differences and different opinions on it. So, and so that's a good point. We talk about all of the all of the happy good yeah. moments of sharing cultural exchanges and cultural ideas. What about the the bad parts? Does it come up where you encounter friction between other cultures? You have different points of view. I think How is that resolved? Dif different points of view is more the the thing that, that that's sometimes coming up, especially in the first year when you're mixed together. You don't know each other. Um, for example, you're working together with an Italian person, with a Chinese person, and with someone from Latin America, for example, and everyone has his different view on a thing. Uh, it might be tough, and especially in the first two semesters, I think it's really tough, but uh, now when I'm in Paris here, uh, you realize that you really got adapted to it, and there's not any more such difficulties that we had. All right, very good. Let's get back to the uh, interview questions. Ben, do you want to read the next one, please? Sure. How well do we get to know city and culture in just a few months being there? Is there a time outside school to have socialize, to socialize and have fun? This might be a good one for Leo yeah. to, yeah. to yeah. tackle. Yeah, actually, uh, you, you, you really get to know the city and the culture. Um, 
that's what we all do together. Uh, we explore the city together, we go out at night together. Uh, so this week, not because we got exams, but uh, I would say the rest of the, the rest of the weeks we, we good answer. He says that. <laughs> yeah, he says good that. answer. Yeah, but uh, the rest of the weeks we really enjoy uh, the cities we are living in, and uh, we definitely have fun together. So, what's your advice to students who are entering a foreign city for the first time? How should they get to know the city, enjoy, and make the most of their new home? What we did is we just took a map, and we went out, and we just explored the city by our own. We went to the center of the city. We explored different things, like different. Uh, uh, we did sightseeing, everything. We went to different bars. Um, we enjoyed the evenings together, and th that's how you explore a city and how you explore a different culture. Like, mm. so you were in London last year. Yeah. Paris this year. Yeah. Any preference for one or the other so far? <sighs> Tough question. Uh, I like both of them. Um, a few weeks ago, I said I prefer London to Ben, but actually now I'm getting more used to Paris. So, uh, in the end, we will see what I prefer. Ben, I believe you were going to say something. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that you're actually, you know, even though it sounds short, you're actually in the city for quite some time. Um, and part of what, you know, the program is about is, is kind of getting this lost in translation feel, you know. Um, you might not speak Italian, but you're going to be in Turin for a year uh, or, or nine months uh, and you want to make the most of it and you will get a chance to, um, to do this. So it's really what, you know, what we're looking for students that are very curious, students that want to explore the world and the cities. Uh, and, you know, of course, it's hard work and a hard time. They will be peak time. But, you know, then there's lots of milestone events on campus like gala dinners, yeah. um, you know, the, the big regatta yeah. in, uh, in, in March or April or yeah. May and, and, and lots of events. So, you know, there's always, always time. It's work hard, play hard. That's the motto of the uh, ESCB <laughs> Europe Bachelor students. And what about associations? Are there student life associations that students can take part in? Yeah, many. I mean, what we do on the program, which um, is kind of a, like a hub to foster creativity, is they have collective projects. In their first and second year, they have to come up together, um, especially so in the first year, with their own project, which can be any student society, any volunteer work for a charity. And they work together on this to really not only just create a project for themselves, but to work for the greater good, to work for you know um, their local environment, local charities, local borough, and so on. Uh, and that's really something motivating. Uh, we've got bigger societies like Call On You that does model a United Nations negotiation, uh, and the students go to New York every year. So many, many different ones to, uh, to go for. Some more postgraduate societies, some more undergraduate societies. It, it really varies. Are you a member of any associations? Yeah, I founded one uh, with three Three friends of mine. Oh, you, you've even created your yeah, own? Yeah, okay. because uh, we like the idea to, to create something uh, and it's that's something that's also possible at ECP. If you have an idea, you can really do it and you can set it up on your own and you will have to support by the staff. So what's so your association? Uh, so we are, uh, we are doing roundtables with uh, politicians and economists and uh, finance people and we are about to do one in uh, about one month. So you yeah. invite politicians yep, and finance exactly. professionals yep, to speak at ECP about any different topics. Any prominent personalities that you've had as guests so far? Uh, not yet. Uh, we will have some in uh, four weeks. All right. Yep. Very good. Will you take the next question, Leon? Yeah. Is it easy to find a roommate? Uh, that's a very good question, I think. Uh, and I have to say it is, yeah. Um, so even before we started at a bachelor program, so one year ago before we went to London, there was a Facebook group uh, that was initiated by ECP and uh, everyone uh, was saying if he's looking for a roommate, if he's still looking for a flat. And uh, it was very easy, actually. You just put your name and you were looking together and uh, it, everyone comes along with everyone. So there was no problem to find a roommate. It's very easy. What other resources are available to students beyond this Facebook group? Sure. Um, on every campus, we've got an office that can put you in touch with either assets agents. Uh, on some campuses, we've got agencies that specialize in welcoming international students that are partner. Uh, and so they can uh, help you getting to know the local way of doing things, way of, you know, like renting a flat, paying a deposit and so on. In, on the London campus, we've got um, a partnership with a local residence, um, student housing, which is a NIDO, which yeah. is uh, just a few minute walk. Uh, from from the school, so we've worked out, you know, um, with uh, all the local campuses to have some sort uh, of of direct or indirect support uh, to find uh, accommodation, and students find it very easily and often way before the uh, start of the year. Uh, if you're very demanding, maybe it's take it's <laughs> going to take you a few weeks, but otherwise, usually you uh, you do find it. All right, we've got a long question here, Ben. Do you want to take it? Sure. What do you mean by high profile students? I'm from a small town in California and would like to do my bachelor's abroad, but I'm not sure I'm high profile. Uh, is it a program for elites? Uh, I think that's a fair question because, you know, often, you know, the word of elite or high profile can be very subjective. 
A straightforward answer to this is say we need evidence that you are among the best where you're coming from. So you might have a percentile ranking if you're into a high school. Uh, we'd expect you to be rather in the top 10, top 15, top 20 percent rather than showing us in, in the bottom 20 percent of the class. Um, but you might also come from one of the brightest school in, in, in your country and in which case if all the brightest elements go together maybe we'll know about the school reputation and that will also be an indication of, of your academic standing. You also have the possibility to take standardized tests like the SAT, ACT uh, and that will also help us to identify you as a high profile student. But also to come back on what I said earlier, I think it's important to show excellence in other areas than just great and academic excellence. So we're going to be looking at evidence of excellence that can be in terms of sports, for instance. You might have competed in regional, national uh, competition, uh, youth, uh, you know, Olympics, whatever. You know, we've got people that, you know, went into, um, you know, semi-professional competitive swimming and all of these are evidence of one thing. When you want, when you work, you can achieve and you can be among the best. Leon, in your personal group, do you see a diversity of social backgrounds and Definitely, can you, yeah. Can you tell um, me more about the people in your got, class? We, we, we got so many different personalities. So many of us have done social activities uh, during the high school time. For example, I've been in politics during the high school already in Germany. And uh, others have done sports, as Ben mentioned. So I think uh, that that's kind of uh, something that makes uh, us as a cohort uh, so well-rounded. And uh, during, uh, due to this uh, thing that we are now uh, from different backgrounds and all have done different activities, we all get better because uh, we learn from each other. All right, let's take the next question. Leon, will you read this, please? Yep. Our interview is being carried in English only. Uh, so I did my interview in German uh, at a Berlin campus, um, but I think uh, they are mainly carried in English, but I, I assume it's still uh, that you can take some of them in your... Yeah, I think, you know, <coughs> the thing is, we want you to be fluent in English, and this is going to be tested uh, in your English standardized test. That said, we really want to get deep into your personality um, and the stress of having a 15-20 minute interview might mean that it's better or you, we're better off altogether decide to do the uh, interview in the local language. So if you're interviewed, uh, if you apply for the Madrid campus, you can do it in Spanish, Paris campus in French, uh, Berlin campus in, um, in German, uh, English uh, in London, obviously, uh, and Turin, you can also uh, do it in Italian. Okay, but English on any of the campuses? English on any of the campuses is possible. And are the interviews possible by Skype? Of course, yeah. It's, uh, we know we interview students from all around the world, all continents, so Skype is absolutely possible. So they don't have to be present to actually no, have the interview? absolutely not. We encourage students to come for open days or for personalized campus tours, but by any means, um, we know that you know, year 12 is often hectic, uh, so there's no need to be present, uh, and we accommodate all time zone differences. All right, let's take the next question, Ben. Sure. I want to have my high school diploma until next June. Can I still apply? Yes, of course. You don't need to be a graduate uh, to apply. However, you won't be able to enroll until we have an official proof of your graduation. All right, that's pretty clear cut. Leon, will you take the next question, please, as soon as it shows up here? Let's see. So while there, here it comes. There we go. Leon. Yep. Do you require any entry tests or standardized scores like the American tests SAT or ACT? Ben. Um, <laughs> so it depends on which system you come from, um, but it can be a plus for your application. If you come uh, from the US, uh, we will look at uh, standardized uh, scores. Uh, it's a way to boost your application, especially if you've got a, a good score. But let's say that you're coming from the French system, from the German system. No, I mean, you know, we know the Certainly. system and, and we know it. It can be useful if we're not familiar with the uh, high school system you're coming from, so we might um, suggest that you take some of these tests to have a, a more objective uh, appraisal of your um, uh, capacity on these tests. Can an American student still apply without taking these tests and still uh, be considered? For American students, we would ask them to take the SET or ACT or one of the standardized tests. All right, very good. Let's take the next question, Ben. Moving every year is intriguing, but sounds okay. stressful. Does ESCP help us find housing in each city? So we I guess, talked about this a yeah. little bit. So I would say, to be honest, past your first year, it's a different game. In your first year, you don't know the people, you're new, and of course we have our offices that can help you and, and connect you with the right people. In your second year and in your third year, you're moving with friends. So it becomes a different game because you know the people, you know who you like, you know who you don't like, you know who you like to go out with but you would not share a house with or a flat with. So 
second and third year you can still ask for help and you know we still have the same connection uh, but most of it is done more informally with yeah. by students among themselves just meeting like two or three weeks before the start of the term in their new city uh, and just going flat hunting together so use the Facebook group in your first year how did you find your flat in the second year here in Paris uh, actually, it was easier to find one here in Paris uh, because uh, we, knew, uh, we knew each other. Um, I'm actually living by my own, so alone. Um, but uh, I was looking at the new app that has been created by ECP uh, and uh, we can find uh, flats there by. So uh, I had a luck that there was a former ECP student who had my flat and I got my flat from him basically. So So what's the app? You haven't mentioned the app yet. No, I mean, it's, uh, it's an app that we've developed um, for our students. It's about the school, about the resources, about the services, uh, and it has a lot of very uh, useful services like um, finding okay, a house okay. and finding an accommodation. All right, well, I think everybody wants to know if ESCP <laughs> has a sense of humor. So we're gonna do that by, by taking a step sideways. Here's your step sideways. Leon, I'm gonna let you read this one. Yeah, three cities in three years. Is this really just an expensive party hopping Euro trip? This used to look like university. So what would you say? Actually, uh, I would <laughs> not say it's a party hopping. Um, and it's not a, it's not, it, it's a university and it's like we really need to do things. Like there, there is time that you can use to explore the city, that you can uh, spend time with your friends but it's definitely not a party hopping. We, we, as we celebrate, that's clear. We will celebrate this Friday after exams. And that's something that also goes into university, but it's not that we are just like doing partying. It's mainly the academic things that are at ECP. And, um, but it's like the cohort is so that people want to study and they want to get to know the subjects. But on the other hand, we are also people who want to Party, and I think Ben summarized it pretty well before. Work hard and play hard. This is not just a PC answer because your director is sitting here. No, it's okay. not. <laughs> ben, what would you have to say? No, I mean, I, I think it's, 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 that's the case. You know, I think it can sound definitely like a jet setter's dream. You know, uh, London, <laughs> Paris, Berlin. It sounds like a good, you know, um, Friday, Saturday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday <laughs> plan. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, it's, it's still a university, that's who we are. We are ESCP Europe and, and Europe is at the heart of our identity. Um, and, you know, everything that goes into being in different cities from the culture of the city, the museums to the night out life, you know, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, students are students and, and you know, yeah. they will go out. And so that's, that's one of the perks. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all about also, uh, you know, the classes and, and the content. Leon, do you have time to travel outside of class? Are you able to explore? Yeah, yeah definitely. So uh, as I mentioned before, I now got my friends in Madrid and Turin as well. So uh, I will definitely, hopefully, find the time to go there, uh, but I'm sure I will find them. So your friends from the first year, you'll be yeah, going exactly. to visit them? Yeah, exactly. I, I want to visit them definitely in Madrid and Turin. And that's something I think that is uh, very useful as well. So you stay in contact with them and you explore a different country by, by mm -hmm. that. So even if you don't go to the same, or if you don't go to a particular city, you can visit your friends there the next year and get a flavor of ESCP there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we see that a lot from our students, you know, that, that go and visit each other on the different campuses and do like mini reunion of their first year, yeah. you know, friends. And that's really what is nice about the, uh, about the program. All right, let's take the next question. Ben, I'll let you read this. How can I get in touch with former students to find out what the ambience is like? I think it's a very good question and very important. I always say, and this is the purpose of Campus Channel as well, but you know, don't just go for the brochure, but try to, to dig what's you know, uh, behind. We have student ambassadors, they're happy to be contacted. Um, so go to your local admission officer and ask for a student ambassador. Uh, Leon, I think you're a student ambassador. Yep. Uh, so you <laughs> might talk to Leon, you might talk to another uh, student, maybe that fits your background. If I don't know, if you're French, if you're uh, Chinese students, we've got ambassadors from all around the world. If you want a kind of like, student experience on the program with someone that maybe understands your background we've got someone that you can be in touch with. Leon did you talk to students before you joined this program? Yeah I did. Um, before I decided to go to ECP I talked to a student ambassador uh, who helped me a lot actually. Uh, he could answer uh, most of my questions and uh, I think it's important to get a view of a current student or a former student to know what you're going to do. What, are some, what were some of your big questions before you joined ESCP? Uh, for example, for me, it was important to know uh, how much uh, are humanities in our degree? Um, what is it like to travel to a city every year? Um, if there's help by ECP, if you move? And um, what's the cohort like at ECP? 
uh, if it's only people from one country or from Europe or if it's outside Europe. So these were uh, mainly the questions I had. And then what about for current students, say mm -hmm. first years and second years who might want to get in touch with students in the year above them that they might not yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, often it can be done with the academic advisor. They talk to the academic advisor and, and you know, the academic advisor might put them in touch with the student from the previous years. Um, we're also working at the moment because it's it's the first year this year we've got first second third year to maybe try to have like an event with all the bachelor students from all the years together um, which would give them a, a great opportunity to all kind of mingle and, and, and exchange with each other all right let's take the next question Leon yep are there scholarships and financial aid available if so how do I apply I think it's more for me. Yep. Um, yes, we have many scholarships. Um, we take into consideration three criteria for scholarship, diversity, academic excellence, and financial needs per se. That is, you know, income uh, of uh, your parents. Um, and we weight them uh, more or less uh, equally. So the idea is that, you know, if, if you're bringing a lot of that diversity um, mm -hmm. and if you're academically excellent and you've got financial needs, you could qualify for a scholarship. Scholarship amounts uh, vary. We've got 25% scholarship, 50% scholarship, therefore the tuition fees. Um, and they also depend on whether you're a UK, uh, EU um, student uh, or whether you're overseas students because we have a fee structure which means that the fees uh, differ whether you're uh, EU or national uh, or whether you're an overseas student. And we have some scholarship um, specifically for non-EU students. So are, these, are there cutoff deadlines for these scholarships? Well, of course there are cutoff deadlines, but is it first come first serve? Do they have a better chance if they apply early? Um, so by all means, if you feel like you might require a scholarship to be able to join the program, it's best to apply early and secure a scholarship early. We have scholarships available um, for every session. That is, we look at scholarship looking for every session. Uh, that said, we have an overall envelope um, in our budget for scholarship. Uh, and if you apply, let's say, our, during one of our July session, which is often more for uh, certain markets that apply a bit uh, later, like you know, Germany, uh, you know, we do have some scholarship like specifically for a certain staff profile, but you know, there might not be um, scholarship available if you apply too late uh, in the year. All right, let's take the next question here. It should appear. There it is. All right, Ben. Yes. What kinds of job do your students have after the formation? Concrete example, please. It varies. So, for instance, we have some people that can go into junior consulting job, uh, so being an analyst uh, in a firm. We have some people that can go into accounting job, uh, assistant marketing, assistant advertising jobs. It's quite varied. We have some people that go and work uh, for NGOs. Um, we have people that, uh, so non-profit uh, sector, uh, and then obviously it's a bachelor program, so we will have quite a lot of students that will go and pursue master studies uh, afterwards. But also just judging at internship offers, it, it very varies, uh, and we see excellent profile, excellent companies uh, for the caliber of students that we get. And so students are required to do how many internships? Two before they graduate? Um, two, possibly three. So the first year internship is not compulsory. Second and third year, uh, we're looking at uh, 12 weeks or three months every uh, year. And then how are they finding these internships? You, you mentioned offers. Career through service. The, the so career we've got services. a career service that um, centralizes offers. Our alumni network uh, also work quite well uh, and simply applying direct, directly applying to startups or, or companies that have come to do a presentation at the school. It's quite varied. Leon, you were mentioning that your internships will shape what kinds of jobs you have access to afterward. Yeah, um, I think it's like Ben mentioned before. It's like, I would say it belongs to oneself. So to your personality, what do you want to do after your degree? Um, so if you know you want to do economics, you know that there are several international organizations you can apply to, central banks, ministries of finance, or whatever. So I think if you know what you want to do and what you like, and I experienced it now after the first year, what I want to do, and then I did the internships, and it showed me, okay, I'm on the right track. So uh, I think if you continue like this, and I will do an internship now, I'm definitely on track for a job afterwards, and I think that's the thing that every student does, and you could see it, most of our students did an internship already after their first year, because they just wanted to see what it's like. Very good. Let's take the next question. Yep. Leon, will you read this, please? Can you tell me more about a social impact project, please? I'm particularly interested to know about projects that have been conducted outside of Europe. So I don't think you have gotten that far yet in your studies. So Ben, do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. So the social impact project is a way for students, rather mm -hmm. than to an internship, to do some volunteer work. Um, students can do a social impact project in Africa, in Asia, 
for instance, volunteering to um, teach English to some kids in Malawi, uh, volunteering to help some companies, uh, to uh, some charities to uh, train. We've got another project like that to train uh, the business skills of local entrepreneurs. So it can vary, but the idea of the Social Impact Project is more of a volunteer work, NGO type work, charity type of work that can be done anywhere in the world. And is that optional or is that obligatory that they do That's it? optional okay. and that can take place instead of the uh, second year uh, internship. How many students typically choose to do the Social Impact Project? Um, it's it's a few every year. It's it's you know the majority will go for a regular internship, but you know I would say between you know 10 15 percent of the students will choose to do something different. And would that social impact project have more value on a CV than an internship? Do you think? That's a good question. I think it really depends on what you want to achieve. I think that if you really want to work in uh, the NGO charity work, it can make a big difference. Uh, I think also for this generation of students it's about making making a statement that you know they care about the greater good and they care about the environment they care about you know causes all around uh, the world uh, and so we see it as uh, not just a fad but something that is there to stay and perhaps one day it will become compulsory how self-directed is the social impact project is it a project designed by the student themselves or is it working with an ngo how does it work we have some NGOs with uh, which we work um, that can offer social impact projects. And then regularly we have students that just come and see us and say, I've got this charity I've been working or volunteering for in the past. They're looking for um, someone to go for three months uh, you know, to India and volunteer and, and we discuss with them. We of course make sure that you know, it's a recognized charity, that they're not going to put themselves in any, any form of danger. Uh, so it can be student driven or it can be working with one of the charities we work with. All right, let's take the next question, Ben. Sure, what is the date of the first sessions? Typically, you've got first sessions um, around December. That is, you know, interview uh, taking place in December for students that uh, want or need uh, an early uh, answer. And then the session go and span across um, the rest of the academic year um, with final sessions, depending on, on, on space still available, uh, around July, uh, typically for markets that uh, maybe rec um, recruit where students apply a bit later, like uh, the German market, for instance. All right, Leon, I'll let you read the next question for yep. us. Do I have an advantage for applying to master's programs at ESCP if I do this bachelor's there? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> my, my, I'll be very, very um, direct with this. Why would you want to do your master's at ESCP Europe when you've done your bachelor's yeah. at ESCP Europe? If you think about education as being an investment, why would you invest in the exact same brand when you're and reinvest in the same brand when you know you've already got the benefits of that brand which is a degree and access to the alumni association of course good students can apply to uh, our uh, master's program uh, and you know good students i mean will be more than happy to take them on board if that's what they want to do however um, i would not recommend people to join the bachelor in management at cp europe if their goal is to get into let's say the master's program because i think it's going to be more enriching for them to do their bachelor somewhere else and then do the master's program another way of looking at it is to say if you've done three years three countries at escp europe do you really want to do another two years, two, three, four countries? Maybe uh, they really love ESCP and traveling. <laughs> maybe they will. I mean, you know, that said, uh, you know, maybe we, we, we could uh, do a, a loyalty discount uh, on, the, on the master's intake. But, you know, seriously, I think that um, if you're good and that's really what you want to do, no problem at all. But my personal advice that I give to students is think strategically and try to get into another top school to get another network. All right, well, we are almost out of time, so I want to finish with something nice. It is time for The Sweetest. <laughs> All right, guys, I would like to know what was your favorite moment from the interview. Leon, we will start with you. My favorite moment was the question about if we got time uh, to do something else besides studies, uh, because uh, people often ask it to me, especially when a new student comes uh, who wants to apply. He asks me, what is it like? Are you only studying? Um, and it's like, I think it's one of the main points. We uh, work really hard. Uh, we learn a lot. Um, but on the other side, our cohort is so uh, such a good group that has been put together by UCP that uh, we can really get together in our free time as well and get to know each other. It's an important question. 
then and you, what was your favorite moment? I think, you know, generally speaking, what I've enjoyed a lot in this campus channel session is to see so many precise question that really show that we've got students that are really keen to join the program and that really ask questions that show that they've got a good understanding about you know what is unique about this program the three year three campus the management liberal arts uh, set and that's what makes me happy all right well thank you both very much for coming in today and thank you for watching we'll see you again soon right here on campus channel